In this video, we are going to look into the properties of continuous time Fourier series. So this video would be very helpful if you are given with the properties table in your exam. We build an intuition about what these properties are and then from there on you can take it forward and apply it on different applications. So over here we have the synthesis expression for the complex exponential Fourier series and for that any periodic signal x of t provided it follows the Dirichlet conditions it can be broken down into sum of complex exponentials and the weights or coefficients are simply a k and they are found by the analysis expression and the coefficients are 1 over t t is the time period and then integration over the time period t x of t e to the power minus j k omega naught t k is the harmonic omega naught is the fundamental angular frequency that is in radians per second now for the dc value we set k equal to 0 and in this expression if we set k equal to 0 we reach a naught and this is just the average value of a signal so from the system perspective we are saying x of t is an input signal and this signal has coefficients a k note that x of t is periodic so the output y of t say this has coefficients which are b k now if x of t passes through an LTI system then we would have y of t at the output now this output y of t is simply a convolution of x of t convolved with the impulse response h of t now in terms of Fourier series coefficients y of t is having coefficient bk so we have a bk over here and x of t has coefficients which are ak so they are ak now from h of t we can have the transfer function h of j omega where this j omega is not discrete that is omega is equal to k omega naught so it is having the discrete values so in time domain if we are convolving so in the frequency domain we would be multiplying so this is what we mean by this expression this was just the preamble now let us look into some of the key properties so linearity property suggests that x of t added with y of t so the continuous time Fourier series would result in coefficients from x of t we would have an a of k and from y of t we have b of k so this linearity is with respect to transformation that is the sum of inputs before transformation leads to sum of outputs after transformation capital A and capital B are constant coefficients respectively so the next property is the shifting property that is time shifting and it is quite a straightforward property whereby we know that the coefficients that are a k they are simply 1 over t t the time period integration uh, with respect to the time period t x of t e to the power minus j k omega naught t dt but we have x of t minus t naught so this means that the coefficient would be 1 by t integration respect to t x of t minus t naught e minus j k omega naught t dt so over here let us use the change in variable say we have a new variable which is t tilde that is t minus t naught so in this case we have 1 over t integration with respect to t again because we are subtracting the constant value from both ends of integration so we have x of t tilde e minus j k omega naught now this t is equivalent to t tilde plus t naught dt tilde so this t naught is 
now not a variable of this integration so this can be taken out so we have e to the power minus j k omega naught t naught and then rest of the values which are 1 by t t x of t tilde e to the power minus j k omega naught t tilde dt tilde and this is simply the coefficient which we called as a k and this is multiplied with e to the power minus j k omega naught t naught so as this concludes our proof which is mentioned over here now in time scaling that is x of a t the coefficients are unchanged let us see why so we are going back to the synthesis expression which is x of t a summation from k minus infinity to infinity a k e to the power plus j k omega naught t so if i scale this time that is i am having a new variable which is alpha t so wherever we have t it would be appearing over there so presently we had t in the exponential only so that's why it would be appearing in the exponential itself so as a k is unchanged and we have the same thing appearing over here so while the synthesis expression and the extension of Fourier series in terms of sum of complex exponentials has changed the exponential has changed the coefficient is unchanged but do note that our now fundamental time period would be based on omega naught and a so that is when a is greater than zero the time period would be t by a also over here the time reversal applied to the continuous time signal results in a time reversal of the corresponding sequence of Fourier series coefficients so time reversal and reversal in the sequence of Fourier coefficients similarly we have a conjugation property x of t if we do the conjugation of it then that would result in a minus k and then we take a conjugate of that and similar is appearing over here another very important property is with regard to symmetries so if you're given with a signal which is real for example a cos function or a sine function or a human voice or any other real signal so in that case the Fourier series coefficient a k they would be equivalent to the conjugate of a minus k also the magnitude of a k would be equivalent to the magnitude of a minus k so this means that the magnitude spectrum in its absolute form would be even function also with respect to phase a subscript k would be equivalent to minus of the coefficient a minus k now some special cases of the real signals that is if x of t this is real and even so you have a signal which is real and even something like that so our coefficients a k would also be real and even they would not be complex similarly if x of t is real and odd for example we have a signal which is of this shape now this is an odd signal which is passing through the origin and it is anti-symmetric so in that case a k would be imaginary and odd so as a k would be equal to minus a minus k so just by these conditions you're going to find a k and from here you can get the other aspects of a minus k next we have another very important property that is a periodic convolution that is we have x of t convolved with y of t right so in a convolution integral form this would be x of tau y of t minus tau d tau so if we are convolving in time this means that we are multiplying in frequency whether this is for Fourier series Fourier transform or Laplace transform and similarly if we are convolving in frequency 
this would mean that we are multiplying in time but there is a very important observation that you need to make over here that in periodic convolution we were having an integration but the convolution in modulation or when we are having a convolution in terms of frequency we are having a summation so why we have a summation in the frequency convolution and why do we have convolution integral in terms of periodic convolution in the time domain so the reason is that if x of t and y of t both are periodic signals so hence the coefficients a k and b k would have values which would be at the respective harmonics say k1 k2 k minus 1 k minus 2 so they would be discrete rather than continuous and since they are discrete so this is why we are having a convolution sum also we can extract out another property which is actually a symmetry of time shifting property that is we were shifting in time and we were getting an e raised to the power minus jk omega naught t naught similarly if we are shifting in the coefficients over here k minus m so we would be multiplying in time domain with e to the power j m omega naught t so this is the reversal of shifting property in time domain so next we have a differentiation property again a very simple and straightforward but we find many applications uh, some of which are given in my other videos it is also very easy to prove so we have the synthesis expression which is x of t that is equivalent to a summation a k e to the power plus j k omega naught t now if we differentiate x of t that is d by dt x of t so in that case the t appearing on the right hand side is in the argument of exponential that is over here t so if we differentiate this the argument would be reappearing as a coefficient that is we would have jk omega naught and the function would repeat itself that is we have e to the power jk omega naught t and then we have a summation which is from minus infinity to infinity ak so this term is now multiplied with the coefficient and this is reappearing over here as a proof another very important property is the integration property and this says that x of t is periodic signal and we are integrating it from minus infinity to t so we have x of tau d tau so in this case the coefficients would be a k divided by j k omega naught if a naught is equal to zero so in integration this function is now appearing in the denominator rather than the numerator which is quite obvious from our earlier discussion but why we have a naught equal to zero as a condition why not for other values of a naught so let us first revisit what is a naught a naught is defined over here and this says that a naught is 1 by t and integration over a time interval t x of t dt now this a naught is an average value or a dc value so what we mean over here is that in time domain if this is 0 so it would be over 0 if dc value is 1 that is a naught is equal to 1 so we may have an average value which is which is continuously 1 from minus infinity to infinity and we know that the area for that would not converge so whenever a naught is not equal to 0 the integration property will not hold because this thing would not converge as in this case yet a very important property over here is Parseval's theorem which simplifies our analysis quite a lot so we know that in time domain the average power of a signal can be found by an integration with the time period t absolute value of x of t whole square dt and we are normalizing by the time period 1 by t so in this way we would find the average power but same can be done in the frequency or in the Fourier series coefficient as well let us see how it can be done 
So let us again start with the synthesis expression that is x of t which is and we try to find the power of this signal and we say we have 1 by t so we have a summation from k equal to minus infinity to infinity and then we have an integration over a time period t coming from over here and then we plug in the values of x of t from here so we have a k e to the power j k omega naught g whole square dt but we know that this is bounded by absolute value of a k square times the absolute value of e j k omega naught t whole square dt so now these a k coefficients are not part of this integration so they can be taken out that is we can have a summation from k minus infinity to infinity a k whole square and then 1 by t integration t exponential e j k omega naught t whole square dt but we know that the absolute square of any exponential function that is e to the power j theta any theta if you take the square you're going to get a value which is 1 if this is 1 then the integration is with respect to constant value of 1 and this would lead simply a value which is 1 so as we are left with this function which we term as the Parseval theorem so hence we can find the average power of a given signal by means of this Parseval theorem.